If you listen to episode 8, Where is the computer that runs the universe? You'll know that I have my doubts about the existence of a computer that's whirring away, applying Wolfram's rules to Wolfram's graphs, performing the computations required to run our universe. This computer, if it exists, is necessarily invisible to us, and as I warned in episode 12, Beware Invisible Things, we should be wary of what we can't see. Still, I want to revisit this idea of a computer that runs the universe. I want to come at it from a slightly different direction. Rather than adopt the stance of the monkey with its hands over its eyes and insist that if I can't see it, it's not there, let's suppose that there is a computer that runs the universe and ask a simple question. How big would it have to be? According to all fan physics, the universe is a graph of nodes and edges. It's hard to estimate the scale of the graph. A rough estimate I've heard from Stephen Wolfram is that the nodes of the graph are typically 10 to the power of minus 100 metres apart, making the edges of the graph typically 10 to the power of minus 100 metres long. Actually, I'm getting things a bit backwards when I talk about an edge having a length in space, or of nodes being a particular distance apart in space. Space doesn't exist independently of the nodes and edges. Space is the nodes and edges. So I'm going to restate that rough estimate more precisely. An object such as a space hopper that's a metre across is about 10 to the power of 100 edges across. Now at the scale of a space hopper, space is approximately three-dimensional. So a space hopper contains roughly 10 to the 100 times 10 to the 100 times 10 to the 100 edges. That's 10 to the power of 300 edges. I'm assuming that the edges are laid out in something like a rectangular grid. As we've seen, that's actually not the case for most rules. The graphs they generate are more convoluted than that. So there may be more edges than I'm counting here. I'm also assuming that the number of edges scales linearly with the volume of space. Or, to be more precise, that the volume of space scales linearly with the number of edges. In other words, if we double the number of edges in a graph, we double the volume of space formed by the graph. Again, that might not actually be the case. There might be edges between distant regions of space. So again, there may be more edges than I'm counting here. Still, I'm going to be conservative and assume that there are roughly 10 to the power of 300 edges in a space hopper. Now, I'm talking orders of magnitude of orders of magnitude here. Usually when we say roughly, we mean give or take 10% or 20% or if we're really being rough, maybe 50%. So when I say it's roughly 20 miles to Cherryville from here, I mean it's 20 miles plus or minus 10%. That is, plus or minus 2 miles. In other words, I mean that it's you know, between 18 and 22 miles. Or, if I'm being really rough, I mean that it's 20 miles plus or minus maybe 50%. That is, plus or minus 10 miles. In other words, I mean that you know, it's between 10 and 30 miles. That's pretty rough. When we're talking orders of magnitude, however, roughly means give or take an order of magnitude, or 2, or if we're being really rough, maybe 5. By the way, if you're not familiar with the term order of magnitude, it kind of means 10 times. So a thousand is an order of magnitude more than a hundred, because a thousand is 10 times a hundred. And 10 to the power of seven is two orders of magnitude more than 10 to the power of five. So if I say that the universe is roughly 10 to the power of 30 meters across, I don't mean that it's 10 to the power of 30 metres plus or minus 10%. In other words, I don't mean that it's between 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of 30 and 1.1 times 10 to the power of 30 metres across. Rather, I mean that it's 10 to the power of 30 metres, give or take an order of magnitude. In other words, I mean that it's between 10 to the power of 29 and 10 to the power of 31 metres across. Or, if I'm being really rough, I mean that it's 10 to the power of 30 metres, give or take maybe 5 orders of magnitude. In other words, I mean that it's between 10 to the power of 25 and 10 to the power of 35 metres across. When it comes to the edges in a space hopper, however, the number is so enormous that we're talking about a whole new level of roughness. 
When I say that there are roughly 10 to the power of 300 edges in a space hopper, I mean that the order of magnitude is 300, give or take an order of magnitude. In other words, that the number of edges in a space hopper is between 10 to the power of 30 and 10 to the power of 3000. At this level of roughness, it really doesn't matter, for example, that the diameter of a space hopper is actually a little less than a meter, or that the volume of a space hopper is better approximated as 4 thirds pi times the cube of its radius. Such inaccuracies are minuscule when we're talking orders of magnitude of orders of magnitude. What matters is that the number of edges in a space hopper probably isn't as low as 10 to the power of 30 and probably isn't as high as 10 to the power of 3000. It's probably somewhere in between. So let's call it 10 to the power of 300. As I've mentioned before, I run my simulations of the universe on this low powered laptop. It's not as big as a space hopper, it's about 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 1 centimeter thick, which is about 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. According to my rough estimate, there are about 10 to the power of 300 edges in a cubic meter, so let's say there are 10 to the power of 297 edges in my low powered laptop. On this computer, I can simulate a universe of about 1000 edges. Beyond that, it slows to a crawl. I should say that one of the reasons for this slowing down is that the more nodes there are in a graph, the longer it takes my software to decide where to position each of these nodes on the screen. Those decisions aren't part of simulating the universe, however. They're part of drawing the universe so that I can show it to you in my videos. I should also say that how I apply Wolfram's rules has a significant effect on how dramatically the simulation slows down. As I explained in episode 15, where to apply Wolfram's rules, every time I apply a rule to a graph, I find all the sets of edges that match the rule, then select one at random. That takes time. If I did as Stephen Wolfram suggests and apply the rule to all the sets of edges rather than just one selected at random, it would take even more time. Much, much, much more time. The multi-way graph generated by this approach branches into a monstrous tangle after only a few iterations. These quibbles aside, my low-powered laptop, which in our universe contains 10 to the power of 297 edges, can simulate a universe of about a thousand edges. In other words, 10 to the power of three edges. Which means that this computer can simulate a universe with 10 to the power of 294 times fewer edges than it contains itself. Obviously there are computers more powerful than my laptop. In the future there will no doubt be computers that are much, much more powerful than my laptop. There might be processors specifically engineered to apply rules to graphs, performing computations in parallel rather than one at a time, like my pedestrian processor. The trouble is the computations of Wolfram physics explode in complexity as the number of edges increases. To simulate a universe with much more than a thousand edges, you'd need a much, much, much more powerful computer. And if you wanted to generate the multi-way graph, well, I don't think I could repeat the word much enough times to communicate how powerful the computer would have to be. Since we're talking orders of magnitude of orders of magnitude here, even a much, much, much more powerful computer seems unlikely to make a significant dent in the numbers. Let's be optimistic. Ridiculously optimistic. Let's say we had a computer the size of my laptop that could simulate a universe of 10 to the power of 20 edges. I find it difficult to imagine that humans could ever build such a powerful computer, no matter. As I say, let's be ridiculously optimistic here. This impossibly powerful computer could simulate a universe with 10 to the power of 277 times fewer edges than it contains itself. Flipping this calculation, you can see that if there's a computer that runs our universe, it likely contains 10 to the power of 277 times more edges than the universe. Now, our universe is pretty big. It's roughly 10 to the power of 30 meters across. Uh, did I already mention that? So if there are roughly 10 to the power of 300 edges in a space hopper, 
then there are roughly 10 to the power of 390 edges in the universe. So if there's a computer that runs our universe, and it exists in its own universe, and that universe evolves according to the same laws of physics as our universe, then the computer that runs our universe likely contains 10 to the power of 390 times 10 to the power of 277, which is 10 to the power of 667 edges. Also, our universe is roughly 10 to the power of 93 times the volume of my laptop. Arriving at the same number in a different way, there are roughly 10 to the power of 93 times the number of edges in our universe as in my laptop. So, if the computer that runs our universe exists in its own universe, and the volume of that universe is as many times the volume of the computer that runs our universe as the volume of our universe is the volume of my laptop, or to arrive at the same number in a different way, if the number of edges in that universe is as many times the number of edges in the computer that runs our universe as the number of edges in our universe is the number of edges in my laptop, then that universe likely contains 10 to the power of 93 times 10 to the power of 667, which is 10 to the power of 760 edges. Okay, I've just bombarded you with a lot of assumptions and a lot of numbers. Here's the bottom line. The computer that runs our universe exists in a universe of maybe 10 to the power of 760 edges. Do you have any idea how large a number 10 to the power of 760 is? I know I don't. It's literally unimaginably large. Remember, our universe is roughly 10 to the power of 30 metres across. Can you imagine how big our universe is? Probably not. Try to hold it in your mind. A universe 10 to the power of 30 times the diameter of a space hopper. Can't do it? Well, you're not the only one. And that's just 10 to the power of 30. If you think you can imagine 10 to the power of 30 space hoppers, try to imagine 10 to the power of 90 space hoppers, the number that would fit into our universe if our universe consisted entirely of space hoppers. Remember, 10 to the power of 90 is not three times higher than 10 to the power of 30. It's 10 to the power of 60 times higher. If you think you can truly conceive of numbers as large as 10 to the power of 90, 10 to the power of 60, or even 10 to the power of 30, I think you're fooling yourself. And if you really can, well, that's just 10 to the power of 90. It's a long, long way from there to 10 to the power of 760. I'm not saying that it's not possible that there's some other universe that's 10 to the power of 370 times the size of our own, in which there's a computer that's running our universe. I'm just saying that it's a stretch. OK, let's get deeper into trouble. That universe that's 10 to the power of 370 times the size of our own. Well, where's the computer that runs that universe? Is it in another universe that's 10 to the power of 370 times the size of this unimaginably immense universe? A universe that's 10 to the power of 1130 times the size of our own? And you know what I'm going to ask next. Where's the computer that runs that universe? Is it in another universe that's, again, 10 to the power of 370 times the size of this even more unimaginably immense universe? A universe that's 10 to the power of 1,500 times the size of our own? This is getting silly, I know. But it's important to take this argument to its limit, to show that, in fact, it has no limit. It's an age-old problem. When the ancients asked the question, what supports the world? And answered, a turtle supports the world. It kind of begged the question, OK, so what supports the turtle? Maybe another turtle supports the turtle. And maybe yet another turtle supports that turtle. Maybe it's turtles all the way down. Or maybe the idea that there's a turtle that supports the world is just the wrong way to think about it. How big is the computer that runs the universe? It's big. I mean, really, really, really big. You can't imagine how big. Literally, you can't imagine. 
And how big is the computer that runs the universe that contains the computer that runs our universe? Well, it's even bigger. Really, 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 really big. And how big is the computer that runs the universe that contains the computer that runs the universe that contains the computer that runs our universe? Okay, I'm going to stop there. Maybe it's computers all the way up. But maybe, just maybe, the idea that there's a computer that runs the universe is just the wrong way to think about it. Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram Physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.